I'm not afraid of talking to strangers. And I, I have a task in front of me right now. I, I need to approach a group of strangers and, and meet somebody, somebody that I don't know, and kind of befriend them and hang out with them the rest of the day. Now, I'm just shaking thinking about it. It's ridiculous. I, I'm a grunt. I, I've met people before, and <laughs> it has worked out. <laughs> but more often than not, it's, it's always like this. So I, I, I'm, I'm at a park. It, it's in the morning in, in April in the Central Valley. And, and the park is beautiful. The, the noticeable thing is the lawn. It's, it's, just, it's just the perfect green. Like um, the groundskeeper, they know their stuff. They know like fertilizing and, 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 and how much water to add. And, and my, my, my wife, she, she's an artist, a painter, and, and she has a sign on her studio door, entering green space. And, and I've always loved that. And that's what I'm thinking about at the park. Like, I, if I think about the green, the lawn, just the sensual, like I'm bathing in it. I don't have to think of this task of meeting this person. <laughs> <laughs> so the car, the car is 20 yards away from uh, this group of 30 people. And, and I, even though my gut tells me to stay back there at the car, I, I figure I'm not going to meet people if I'm there. So I come <laughs> uh, and, and I'm mute. I, I'm just dumb. I, I won't, I, I don't know what to say. And, um, okay. Everybody is at this park, myself included, because we are going uh, canvassing for the Democratic Party. It's my first time doing it. And anyway, I stand, I stand next to the group, and uh, it's, it's, it's distracting. Like, like I'm just, they're, they're all talking to each other. And I know, you know, I know my wife, I know one or two other people. But it, it's just noise. It sounds like insects, like cicadas. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's their voices and then the voices in my head. You know, like, this guy looks like my old boss and, and he's, you know, alpha male. How do I deal with that? And, and then th there's this young woman who's attractive, but, but my wife is here and that's what <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just noise. But, okay, I, just focus, Rob, focus. And, I notice uh, there's like this subset of the 30 people in front of me, and there are six or seven people. They're kind of communicating with each other. And there's one guy, he's talking a lot, uh, which is a red flag for me because, uh, you know, I'm like, oh no, he might talk too much, and then it'll be tiresome listening to him. <laughs> uh, but but he, he's actually saying good things. Um, he, he's canvassed many times before. And, and he, he, he has lots of uh, answers to the questions that most of us new folks have. So when it comes time to pair up, and, and that's why I have to meet somebody, is because we're, we're supposed to canvas in pairs. I look at him and I, I say, hey, you know, you want to canvas together? Yes. <laughs> so, I can relax, make major pass, <laughs> accomplish. You know, this guy, is, um, he's... Uh, He's, he's taller than me, and he, he's kind of built like a string bean, and um, I, I learned later that he, he's about 10 years older than I am. His name is Peter. Okay, now on to canvassing. I, 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 don't, I don't really think of myself as a political person. 
I, I, I've always thought like it's what's inside us that counts, like the, you know, our, our, our feelings, our, our, our intuition, uh, like, like politics is external and, and, and you know, if, if, if we could all just take care of our personal stuff, politics would resolve itself. Uh, but that, that, that hasn't really been working out. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was asked to canvas, um, I, I thought uh, uh, I thought that I should do it. it. You know, it wasn't like I woke up one one morning and thought canvassing is the thing. I, 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 I'm reluctant and. I've, I've got, I've got uh, you know, a spiel in my head of what I'm going to say. But I basically, I follow Peter around, like for, for, I don't know, 10 or 15 houses. He does all the talking, and I listen and learn from him. And he tells me one really important thing, which is that we're going to spend most of the day out there, and he says we should be happy if we, mm, we get commitments from people to vote Democrat, like maybe 10 people all day, which to me sounds like horrifyingly low for all the effort. Like it took an hour and a half to drive there and spend all day. But at the same time, I, it, it like helps me relax because, you know, the expectations are low. And he's done it so many times, like, okay, I, I, I believe what he said. So he, like I said, he does the first 10, 10 or, or 15 houses and I tell him, all right, I want to do the next one knock on the door, and it's, it's bright out, right, uh, Central Valley, I'm wearing this hat. It's bright outside, but it's dark. The door opens, it's dark inside, and, and these, these folks, it's this young couple, they're in their maybe late 20s, and they answer the door exactly the same way I always answer the door at my house which is with, when strangers answer, which is with a, a, an attitude of, why are you interrupting my day, and how soon until you leave? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't help, and, and, and I, 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 I stutter out my words. Hi, my, and I shake too, I'm liable to shake. My, my name is Robert, this is Peter, we're with the local Democratic Party. And, you know, it's like the energy I'm getting from these people. They're, they both have furrowed brows, and, and, and they're talking, but, but very clipped sentences. And it's, it, it's kind of like, you know, it reminds me of my cat when he's mad, like, <laughs> go away, just go away. What are you doing here? But, but, it turns out they were uh, registered Democrats, and they didn't like the Republican, the, the incumbent Republican, we're, we're out there trying to, you know, flip this House seat. Um, there's been an incumbent Republican, he's been in office for, I think, since 2011. Um, they, knew, they knew who he was, they didn't like him, and, um, but here's the thing, we were there in April trying to get people to, to vote in the primary, and these guys didn't even know that the primary was coming up and that it was important to vote, because as, most of you probably know in California, it's possible for another Republican to get in and run against the incumbent Republican. That's exactly why we're there. We're trying to get enough votes with one Democrat to beat out any other Republicans. So <laughs> despite my awful delivery and stuttering and feeling horrible, they, you know, we got the commitment to vote, which is a, it's a tangible thing. They. Um, we have these blank postcards, and, and we give them the blank postcards. They fill it out with their name and address. Um, we give it to the folks from the organization that we're with, and they mail it back to them the week of the primary. So I'm, you know, walking away thinking, okay, that worked. Um, kind of, it's not about you, Rob. It's about, you know, communicating it, and, and get, you know, success happened. So. After that, shortly after that, uh, Peter and I took turns, 
and met lots of people, um, met our fellow citizens out there in the Central Valley. At about one in the afternoon, and at this point it's super hot, like um, the kind of heat where you, you're looking for shade both consciously and unconsciously because you know it's going to be 20 degrees cooler. And, and the neighborhood is pretty nice. I, I, I had imagined sort of like dusty farm worker community, uh, but no, it, this was a, a housing development built in, I don't know, the 70s or 80s, like a, you know, nice white stucco houses, two car garages, green lawns, nice, the same green as at the park. Hmm. Anyway, we get to this, we get to this house, and um, we have an app with all of the folks' names on it that the Democratic Party wants us to, to approach. And that app has both registered Democrats and mm, registered but declined to state. This guy um, declined to state. We're walking to his house, and his house is white. It's a bright, sunny day. He's got a, a security gate on his door that I, I'm familiar with. Like, I've seen them at Home Depot, although they're usually black at Home Depot. They're like a, a vertical steel bars with sheet metal with thousands of, uh, of tiny holes in it. <laughs> and his is painted white. And, and there's no shade at his house. And plus, they, um, they ask you not to wear sunglasses. Because they, you know, they, they, you know, appropriately, you can be more personable if you're looking at somebody without, you know, dark glasses. So uh, I'm kind of um, disoriented from how bright it is. Uh, it's so blinding. And as we get closer to the house, we hear these dogs barking. And, and Peter and I had met lots of dogs, heard, heard lots of dogs that day. No big deal. But these were... This was like three or four big, deep-throated, like, like opera singing dogs. <laughs> ruff, 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 ruff. And we could hear them through, the, through, the, through the, the, the security door. And the closer we get, the more agitated the dogs are. And, and then I knock on the door, and, and the dogs just erupt. They explode, like, <laughs> ruff, 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 ruff. Like bouncing against the walls, it just it's chaos in there. You know, I don't want the door to open. And then I hear the homeowner, shut up, shut up, calm down. Ruff, 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 ruff. And, and then he's yelling at us, go away, not interested, not interested. Peter and, and I look at each other, I'm like, fuck that, you know, we our <laughs> houses on our list. We don't need to talk to this guy. And, and we're, we're on the sidewalk in front of his neighbor's house. And, and we hear his door open, and he's calling to us. Uh, luckily, the dogs stay in the house. And, and he says, what did you want? What did you want? And he walks back to us, and we walk to him. And we meet, like, in front of his car, which was in his driveway. Now, now this guy is, um, he, he's a little bit shorter than me. And uh, my first impression is, I, I, can't, I can't quite see his eyes. Clearly, because he's he's got very very thick lenses on, and and you know I wear glasses all the time. I have to wipe my glasses three or four times a day. It seems like he hasn't wiped his glasses in a week, <laughs> and, and so you know that's odd because because the, the, you know the, the best the, the the best experiences w w with anybody you know it, it is when you can. I feel like you just you kind of you can get close to somebody and you look at them and you you know they're looking at you and you just sense each other's body language and and you you know there's some kind of communication going on and even if you have difference differences of opinion at least you 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 can you know you you feel like something is gelling and and with this guy that didn't seem like it was going to be possible like because I, I couldn't see I couldn't see his eyes. And so he also he was he's, he's like I think I said he's shorter than me and he's kind of built like the Hulk, uh, but but not not muscular or, or overweight but just like tense right like like hard, and, and he's also profusely sweating. Now 
it's the Central Valley. I was wearing this hat. I was in the sun all day, and my hat was sweaty, but the rest of me was pretty dry. He kind of looks like somebody dipped him in ointment or, or something. And, okay, like, people's bodies are different. No big deal. But for me, I'm always looking for cues. Like, what do I have in common with people that, you know, as a way in to, to communicate? What, you know, how can we connect? And, and like, this was very, why are you so sweaty? You're, you're <laughs> indoors. Anyway, so he says, what do you want? What do you want? And, 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 I, and so I start to go into my talk. I said, this is Peter. My name is Robert. We're from the local Democratic Party. And he cuts me off. Are you with him or are you against him? I'm like, mm, well, we're Democrats. I don't know what that means. You, you don't know Democrats, Republicans? No, I, I don't know much about politics. Are you with them or are you against them? I said, and, and I'm trying to stall for time because I, I still want to connect with this guy. Because it's so odd. I never met anybody that doesn't know, an adult that doesn't know Democrats from Republicans. The only, the only I, so I stall for time just by naming our president, which, which I try not to do. Um, I, you, you, you mean you mean Donald Trump? Well, I'm against it. And he says, "Well, I'm for him." And I don't want to talk to you guys. And he turns around and walks back into his house. Now, you know, I met a lot of people that day, and I, I am the most confused about this fellow, like, or, or just unresolved, like. On, on one hand, I feel sorry for him that he doesn't, you know, have the like capability to understand Democrats from Republicans. I, I don't know, you know, what his what his mental state is. So I feel bad for him, but I also feel like, well, fuck you, like you you're just you don't you don't know anything about politics. But how did you get seduced to to support Trump? You know, you're. You're just on the wrong side. It's just so cliche. My, my, my cliche view of what a Trump supporter is, is like in this guy. It's, it was, his, his house was disorienting. He was disorienting. And, uh, Or the end of the day. Probably like uh, two o'clock out there. Um, we approach this other house and there, there's a young guy washing a uh, pickup truck in the front yard with a hose. Guy, I'm thinking maybe 18 years old. And, and I walk up to him and I look at my app and I say, uh, are, are you Hector? Shakes his head and goes like this which makes me think he doesn't speak English. And he, he goes in the backyard and comes out with um, a guy who seems to be about my age, my height, my weight. And, and I say to that guy, Hector? He says, no, my name is Marco. I say, hi, Marco. Um, this is Peter. My name's Robert. We're with the local Democratic Party. And we're in the neighborhood today out talking to folks to see what you might be thinking about um, what's going on in Washington and how it might be affecting your life. And Marco very calmly says, yeah, thanks for coming out. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty unhappy with what's going on in Washington. Uh, everything I hear and, and read about what our president is doing just seems wrong. And, and Marco goes on to tell us that he's worked for, for Gallo, the wine, the wine company, in the shipping department for 30 years, which is like striking to me. Um, I, I've never worked at a job more than four years. And, and I feel the distance between Marco and I, but, but I, I like him because he's so calm. And, and it, it, I can calm down when, when, when I sense that in him. And, and he says, um, he tells us that it, it, 
Gallo had been shipping uh, most of their product to China in, in recent years, but because of the tariffs and the trade policies that Trump is putting in place, Gallo is losing a great deal of business, and Marco is concerned about his job. And this is a, a common conversation amongst him and his colleagues. And he, he's also aware of the ICE raids and the immigration policies. And, and I mean, I'm totally with Marco on the, on the issues, but like I said, I'm just, I'm kind of melting at, at how calm he is because everybody that I know, myself included, whenever we talk about politics, we are kind of furious and, and, and speak in hyperbole and we're, you know, I, I just get tense thinking about what's going on. And for whatever reason, Marco is just a matter of fact about it. So I say, Marco, can we get you to, um, to vote in the primary that's coming up? And he says, well, um, he tells us he's not registered. So I look at Peter, who's already pulling the blank form out of his bag. And I say, Marco, we could, we could register you right now. Sounds good. And, and the whole exchange with, with Marco took like five minutes. And, and, you know, he committed to vote and he registered, which is even better. And I'm, I walk away just feeling great. At, at end of the day, uh, uh, a number of us had made plans to meet at a local restaurant and get something to eat before driving back to San Francisco. My wife and I uh, enter the restaurant, and, and it's kind of a big place. It's, it's, it's like this wide and twice as deep as the theater. And, and it's, it's packed. Like it, everybody in town is there. And it's noisy, and there are food wrappers everywhere. And it's, you know, it, it, I'm starting to hear insects again, like way too much overload. And <laughs> I, I, just, I just go over the food line. My wife and I go to the food line, and we're standing there, and I'm, I'm looking up, like trying to figure out what burrito I'm going to order. And I get a tap on the shoulder. It's Marco. He says he recognized me by my hat. Nice to see you. We just ex exchanged a few sentences. Nice. My wife and I get our food, holding it in trays, walk over to this big booth where uh, a number of other canvases were sitting. And there's room for her, and there's no room for me. And, and I am, um, you know, what I call the frozen man stance. Like, what do I do now? I, I, don't, I don't know anybody here. There's no room at these tables. And I, I, I'm like, you know, a kid in middle school doesn't know where to sit in the cafeteria. And I see Marco, he's like calling me over. And I went and sat and, and I had lunch with him. And, and for whatever, 20, 25 minutes, we, we mostly talked about politics. And he, eventually said he wanted to canvass himself. He wanted to volunteer. And God, I just wanted to jump up and down and hug the guy. He, this was like a, you know, this was a hat trick, a, a trifecta. This was everything I wanted. I, this, is what I, this is why I came to the Central Valley. The, the guy registers to vote, and he commits, and he's going to canvass. And plus, you know, I'm from San Francisco. I'm kind of a carpetbagger there in the, in the Central Valley. He's a, he's a local. He's, and he speaks Spanish. He, you know, he knows the issues that his neighbors are up against. And I mean, it, it was uh, it was just superb. I, 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 honestly, I was just floating, floating out of there.